Welcome back Commodore fans. Today I'm going to demonstrate a neat little trick of inserting a machine language routine into a basic REM statement. I'll be using the basic aid utility along with Supermon64, which I've already set up. The first example is the classic, but really annoying, flashing border. This program reads and pokes the machine language routine into place and then executes it. Okay, let's exit then clear the screen and start Supermon64 to see the code. We can start Supermon from basic aid using the break command, like so. Then we disassemble the short 10-byte program. To put this into a rem statement, we first need to get the 10 bytes that make up the machine language routine. I'll set them aside for now and exit back to basic. Next, we type new and start a basic program at line 10 with a rem statement, a blank space, a quote, and then 10 spaces or characters. You can use any character you wish as they are just placeholders. Then end the line with a closing quote. These 10 spaces are where the machine language code will be placed. Next, I'll clear the screen again to get rid of the clutter, go back into Supermon, and do a memory dump starting at hex address 0800, which is the start of basic text. And now you can see why I used a graphic character for the placeholder. The addresses you need to change are easily identifiable. The first space inside the quotes is at hex address 808. That's 2056 decimal. So we start entering the hex code by moving the cursor to the correct position and typing in the hexadecimal bytes. Once that is all entered, we exit back to BASIC and list the program again. And you can see we now have a very strange looking REM statement. The characters inside the quotes is our machine language program. We can now continue our BASIC program on line 20 with SYS2056 to start the program. And that's it. We're done. When the program is run, we get that ugly flashing border effect. Let's exit and... Oops, I should have cleared the keyboard buffer and reset to the default border color upon exit. Let's fix that with a poke 198,0 to clear the keyboard buffer and poke 53280,14 to reset the border color to light blue. Then run again and exit. Perfect. This can now be saved as a normal basic program. So let's save it as border-rim. Okay, now let's do something more useful than just flashing the border. Let's put a 16-byte cursor plotting routine in a REM statement. I showed this routine in a previous video. And here it is as a basic loader. When run, it pokes the machine language code into the tape cassette buffer, starting at decimal address 828. And as before, we enter Supermon and disassemble to get the hexadecimal bytes. When that's done, we exit back to BASIC, type NEW, and create a BASIC program starting at line 10 with a REM statement, a blank space, a quote, 16 placeholder characters, and close quote. Then we head back into Supermon and enter the bytes. When complete, we exit back to BASIC and list the program. And there is our machine language plot routine. Let's test it to make sure everything is working OK by adding a few lines of code and then running the program. Perfect. We now have a machine language plot routine with a small footprint that is contained within the BASIC program. I don't know about you, but I don't like the messy look of the rim statement with all the garbage characters. So let's make it more aesthetically pleasing and informative. To do this, I'm going to embed delete characters in the rim statement, so that when listed, the garbage characters are removed from the display and leaves my human readable text in place, so it looks like a normal rim statement. Let's clear the screen again and list the program. We're going to re-enter line 10 
putting in the 16 placeholder characters, then a colon, a quote, and then the text I want displayed for the remark. When finished typing the text, we'll leave off the closing quote and press return. Now we need to calculate how many delete keys we need to bring the text message to where the first quote is. So I'll count them out now. Twenty. We need twenty spaces. So we move the cursor to just after the quote and press Shift Insert twenty times to open the space up. When that's done, hit the delete key twenty times to fill in the space and hit Enter. Now when we list our program, we see a normal looking rem statement. All we need to do now is insert the machine language code the same way as before with Supermon. So I'll do that now. And we're done. Let's exit back to BASIC and list the program again. As a final check, let's run the program to make sure everything works OK. And yes, everything is working. Let's save just the rem statement as a basic program so that when we need a plot command in any future program, we can just load this as the first line of any new program and continue on from there. Just for fun, I tried to put a machine language version of the classic 10 print maze demo into a rem statement. Let's load it in and take a look. It's pretty ugly. The rem statement now spans multiple lines, and some character caused the computer to switch to the lowercase character set. However, the program does still work. Okay, let's stop that and list it again. And now we're back to lowercase. Here is the source code for the machine language routine. To make the program work correctly, I had to switch to normal character mode at the start of the machine language routine. I did try to hide the garbage character as before, but was unsuccessful because the cursor wraps to the end of the previous line and would require 160 delete characters, which would exceed the 80 character line limit of BASIC. There are some limitations when trying to put machine language programs inside of a REM statement. First, you cannot have a zero byte in the machine language code anywhere, not as a number or as an address, because BASIC will interpret a zero as the end of the line and read the next two bytes as the address to the next BASIC line, and it won't be a valid address. The result will be, at best, to cause BASIC to just abort the program and, at worst, crash the computer. For example, here is a program I created with just one machine language instruction embedded in the REM statement. Load the accumulator with zero, and then go on to print hello using BASIC. Looking at the memory dump, we see that the zero from the LDA instruction is at hexadecimal address 809. BASIC will interpret this zero as the end of the BASIC line, and read the next two bytes, 2200, as the address of the next basic line. And that address, which is read as 0022, is not a valid address. The actual end of the line is at address 80B, and the next two bytes are the address to 0819, which is the end of the basic program. The next limitation is that you're limited to 80 characters or bytes per line by the editor. So if you want to write anything longer, you would have to do some kind of jump from line to line, which is really not practical. There are ways to use the maximum of 255 characters per line, but that's a separate topic for another time. And finally, this will put garbage characters in your basic program, making the listing look terrible or even unreadable, and maybe even preventing the program from running at all. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Have fun trying out this trick on your own Commodore computers. And if you come up with a cool routine that will fit into a RIM statement and still execute without error, leave me a comment below. I'll see you next time, and let's be careful out there.